What are some psychology experiments with interesting results? Mice were put on two sides of a wall with a door in. Only the right mouse could open the door. Slowly, they filled the left mouse's room with water and eventually when right mouse saw them in danger, they opened the door. However, mice that had previously been on the left side and were now on the right, mice who had previously been wetted, opened the door considerably faster because they knew how unpleasant it was to be in the other scenario. Basically mice have empathy. Hedonic adaptation, put simply, a person who had just won the lottery and another person who had just been paralyzed took a survey to measure their life contentment. Obviously, it was high and low, respectively. However, they both took the same survey a year later and both scored similarly. The point being that regardless what happens to you in life, good or bad, you will always adapt and spend most of your life feeling neutral. There was some study I read about a few years ago that says people's overall happiness is either set at a young age or just kind of an eight. You tend to be happy or unhappy regardless of your situation, as where most people tend to think you are made happy or unhappy by life. It kind of measures well with what I've observed. I've known incredibly well-to-do people and incredibly poor people. Happiness doesn't seem to correlate to that a lot from my experience, but maybe I'm just looking for an excuse as to why I'm a miserable bastard when I have most the things most people want. Although to counter the study I'll say that the happiest people I've known generally have lots of people who care about them and who they care about, and I've never known someone who is simultaneously happy and lonely. One time I participated in a paid research experiment. I was basically tricked onto thinking I was drunk. I was placed in a room with two other people and we were instructed to drink vodka with cranberry juice over a period of time while we socialized. After we drank I was placed in a room where I had to read some flashing words on a computer. I felt pretty drunk at this point. When the researcher came back into the room he gave me my car keys and said I was never actually given alcohol. He briefly told me that because I was anticipating drinking for this experiment that my brain had tricked me into feeling the effects of being intoxicated. I immediately snapped out of it and was completely amazed at how I felt. Solomon Nash's experiment on conformity. He set up a test wherein he would show three lines of different lengths to five or six individuals. I forgot the exact number, who had to state which line was the longest of the three. The thing is, only the last individual is the participant and the others are actors paid to answer in a specific manner. For the first few questions, they choose the correct answer but later on they start choosing the wrong one. The participants are conflicted as to whether they will say the correct answer or conform to the wrong answer as to not be judged by others or due to self-doubt of their own answers. In the end, most do conform. It's really interesting since it shows how powerful conformity is in the face of doubt, up to a point that some even question their own sanity during the test. Another variation of the experiment also had interesting results. It had the same set up with five individuals with the last person being the participant. However, this time some of the actors say the wrong answer while one actor says the correct one. There was an increase in participants who would choose the correct answer and avoid conformity. It shows how much doubt one can have on oneself when alone but be brought back to self-confidence when they find outside support. Add that conformity in participants might be caused by either being afraid others' judgment or due to self-doubt. Split brain studies. One example, by providing differing information to each hemisphere of the brain and split brain individuals, those with a severed corpus callosum, meaning there's no communication between the two hemispheres, they found that people would actually physically grab their own hand with their other hand if they saw it making a mistake. Basically each side of the brain controls one side of your body, and in split brain people you can actually make both sides display a disagreement with the other. Which is insane, if you think about it. There's another similar experiment where people with split brains have one eye able to see a picture and the other eye can't see it. Then they draw the picture with one hand. While they're drawing the picture if you ask them, 
they have no idea what the image they're being shown is, it's like they can't see it even though they can draw it. Also, if you give someone like this a fork and cover their left eye, they'll be able to tell you what you use it for, but not be able to recall what it's called. Then cover the other and they'll instantly be able to tell you that it's a fork. But will have no idea what you use it for. Weird, but also interesting. If you train a rat to press a lever for cocaine, and then put it in a box with only that lever, it will press that lever as much as you'll allow it. The rat will stop eating and drinking and just do cocaine. If you train a rat to press a lever for cocaine and then put it in an enriched environment, example, other rats to play with, toys, place to explore, where it could still press the lever for cocaine, it may press the lever occasionally but not as frequently as its counterpart in the dull environment. These findings were a big deal in the behaviorism world because they put a lot of previous results into context and help explain the link between poverty and drug use. Research on learned helplessness is fascinating. Researchers would put dogs into shuttle boxes, long cage-like structures that the dog could move around in and would shock the dog through the floor on one side of the box. The dog, at first, could easily escape the shock by moving to the other side of the box. Eventually, the researcher adds a wall so the dog can't escape the shocks, it just sits there, being shocked without escape. Through this the dog learns helplessness over repeated trials and extended periods of time. Even when the wall is taken down, the dog won't walk to the other side and avoid the shocks anymore. It has become so used to the pain that it doesn't even try to escape when escape would be easy. This research has been used to explain certain aspects of human behavior, especially related to repeated experiences of abuse, addiction, and poverty. It takes a long time to get somebody out of this mindset and is possibly one of the reasons why people get stuck in terrible situations. Research on Cognitive Dissonance Basically, the idea is that when we have two contradictory beliefs, we unconsciously adjust one to make it compatible with the other. For example, in one experiment, participants that were paid less to do a boring task found the task to be more interesting than those that were paid more. We unconsciously reason like this. If I didn't do it for the money, then I must have done it because it is interesting. Our minds work like this pretty often. Edit, cognitive dissonance equals the mental discomfort experienced when holding two, or more, contradictory beliefs. Adjusting our beliefs is just one way of dealing with the mental discomfort. I don't know the name of it but apparently two people become closer if they survive through something together. Not even actual surviving death scenarios but anything that has you on your toes and hard tracing. Like a roller coaster. The influence of the color red in sports. Judges were shown a video of a taekwondo match and awarded more points to the red competitor versus the blue competitor. When the colors were digitally reversed. Judges awarded more points to the other, now red, competitor. Edit, since there's a lot more interest than I expected, here's some more info. Red may be a signal of dominance as reddened skin is associated with higher testosterone, or possibly higher fertility in women. Wearing red may induce intrinsic psychological effects which increase dominance in addition to altering the perception of others. Researchers found that putting red leg bands on birds increased dominant behavior, as they took the lion's share of the food. For my psychology degree dissertation, I presented photos of men to be rated on a scale of friendly, zero, to threatening, ten. Men received a higher threat score if I photoshopped their t-shirt to be red. Edit 2. Thank you for the gold award. Aaron and Dutton, 1974. Misattribution of arousal. Men who had just walked across bridge, either steady or unsteady, were approached by a female psychology student, 
posing to do a project on the effects of exposure to scenic attractions on creative expression. The man had to complete a questionnaire and write a short dramatic story about a picture she provided and she gave them her phone number if they had more questions. Men who walked across the shaky bridge were more likely to call her up because they misattributed the arousal from the bridge to the woman. Too long, didn't read, watch a horror movie on the first date. Wagner and his white bears. Essentially, people who were instructed to not think about a white bear, found themselves thinking about it more than those actively trying to think about one.